If you want to learn Python, then you need to first set up your computer to actually run the Python program, which is what executes our Python code. So there are a couple of things that we need to do to get our computers ready. I'm going to show you on my computer, and my computer is a Mac, so if you're using Windows or another platform, this will be a little bit different for you. And these tools, it should be noted, cannot run on the Chrome operating system. So if you have a Chromebook, then you're probably going to want to switch over to a Windows computer or to a Mac in order to do some of these things. Um, you can do some Python programming on a Chromebook using some of the web-based tools, but your options will be limited and some of the things just can't be done using the web-based tools. So it is best to go with Windows or Mac, or if you're a more advanced user on Linux, of course there are tools available for you there as well. Um, but for the beginner, I definitely recommend either a, an Apple computer or a Windows computer for Python programming. So let's get going. And the first thing we need to do is download the Python, uh, the Python um, machine or the Python program itself, which is what executes our code for us. So it basically serves as an interpreter between our computer and the code we write because Python, the Python language can't be natively understood by our computer. So let's download Python first. And so what we need to do is open up a web browser like this and go to python.org. And this is what you should see there. And this is the Python website. And this is free to download, of course, because it's an open source application. And you can see here, if I go to downloads, I've got a lot of stuff going on here. Now it's going to suggest something for my computer and most of the time, download for macOS, this is gonna give me the newest version of Python for the computer that I'm using. Usually this is the link that you can use. Now, if you want something else, you can go to your respective platform over here. You do not want to go to source code and all releases is probably gonna be a little bit overwhelming, but if you go to Windows or Mac OS, depending on the platform that you use, then you can get the the version that's right for you. Usually, like I said, this is the one that you can download. But if I go to Mac OS here, you can see, I'm gonna just look for that latest Python 3 release right up here on the very top. And I wouldn't go anywhere else. And if I go to Windows, you can see there's something similar there and it's 3.13.1 .1 at the time that I'm recording this. And they, produce new releases on a fairly regular basis. So um, if this number doesn't match up exactly to what you see, that's okay. Um, go with whatever is on this top line here. I'm just going to use this link. You can notice that it's the same version and I'm gonna download this for Mac OS and I'm just gonna drop that right onto my desktop so I can find it if I need it. Wait for that to download, it's pretty quick here even on a slow connection it should be pretty quick and then you can see there it is on my desktop and the windows installer will of course look a little bit different but it kind of does the same thing so i'm going to open that up and i'm going to go through the stages of the install for the most part i can just accept all of the default things that it's telling me I don't need to change any options. My computer's asking me to put in my password for security. And there it goes, it's installing Python. And your messages may vary depending on your system. And there we go. Now Python is installed and it opened up a little a little uh, folder here with the version 3.13 and you can see here some of the uh, Python apps that are associated with that and I also have a, a few previous versions because of course I've installed this before so um, I just leave those there for uh, for other purposes but um, you should have your Python 3.13 it's in my applications folder on Mac uh, if you're on Windows it'll vary just a little bit but uh, what you need to do 
to verify that everything is installed correctly is you will want to open your terminal and on the uh, Windows machine it's a command prompt but what I'm going to type is Python 3 you can see there's no spaces there and if I have this done correctly then I should get something like this and you can see now the command prompt looks a little bit different it's it's a different color here on my machine and I've got some of this uh, Python messaging going on I'm actually inside a Python shell now so what that means is I can execute Python commands in the terminal for example if I want to type something like print and then a left parenthesis and a quote and then another quote and another parenthesis just like this and if I hit enter it's going to execute that command so it's basically I've just told it to print the words hello world to the screen and then that's this part is the response so I can see now that Python is running properly on my computer and that's good news because now I can run my Python scripts so I can close that window and there's one more step that we want to do for Python uh, to be something we can do on our computers in terms of coding Python and that second step that we want to perform here is the installation of what's called an IDE or an integrated development environment basically it's a program that makes our life a lot easier when it comes to programming our code in Python and the one that I am going to recommend that you use and that I'm going to be using throughout these videos is called PyCharm and PyCharm is a, a really great program and it's used by a lot of professionals in the world of Python programming and uh, the nice thing is that the company that creates PyCharm um, creates a free version and a paid for version and the free version is called the community edition and anybody can use it and it's very robust it's got a great set of tools it doesn't have some of the more advanced bells and whistles that the pro version has uh, but it is completely free to use and so if you decide that you want to become an advanced Python programmer and you want those advanced tools you can always upgrade to the professional edition and you know pay for that as it as as it goes but um, the community edition is is wonderful and it's very very useful so let's let's go through the process of downloading and installing uh, PyCharm community edition and then you can get started with Python programming. So I'm going to go to um, another website. It's called jetbrains.com. J-E-T-B-R-A-I-N-S.com. -E All one word. Looks like this. And I'm going to click on Developer Tools. And you can see they have lots and lots of IDEs, and Integrated Development Environments. And these are all for different languages. So the one I'm going to go to is PyCharm here. And you can see a little preview of PyCharm. And it has a link here that says download. And of course, websites change all the time. They may change the look of this page. They may change the wording on this page. But the general idea of what I'm doing here should be um, similar um, even if they change things so I'm going to click download and you can see here there's a link right up on top for PyCharm Professional and if I scroll down just a little bit I get the one I want PyCharm Community Edition and this is completely free so that's really nice and it's got a download link and it preloads the the file that it thinks I need to download so it pre-selects that for me and it gives me the two versions uh, that are available for the Apple Mac uh, operating system and if I want to uh, get one for Windows I would need to go to this on a Windows computer and I believe there's a way to get to the Windows version from here but since I'm on a, a Mac um, I don't need to do that 
if you are on a Windows computer and you see the Apple version of this, then something has gone sideways and you'll have to find um, find a different computer. But 99% of the time, it will suggest the correct thing for you to download. Now, if you're on a Mac, you need to know if you're on an Intel chip or an Apple Silicon chip. If you bought a computer in the last three years that's new, uh, Apple computer, it's going to be Apple Silicon. So uh, Intel is kind of the older, uh, the older chip at this point. So Apple Silicon is the one you want. And you're going to hit download. And again, let's save that to the desktop. And these installer files, by the way, um, after you've installed the Python program and after you've installed the IDE, these installer files um, can be thrown away. You can get rid of them because you no longer need them. So I'm just waiting for this to download. And as soon as it is, we will pick back up. Okay, we have the file downloaded now. And I can see here it is on my desktop. And this is a DMG file on a Mac. So it's a disk image. So what's going to happen when I double click this is it's going to open up a a virtual disk. And to install PyCharm, all I'm going to do is take this icon and drag it to my applications folder. And you can see PyCharm CE or Community Edition is being installed. Now when it's done, I will need to eject that virtual disk. And then I can take both of those installer files and get rid of those. So that will free up some space on my hard drive. And now if I go to applications, I have installed PyCharm CE. Now I do have PyCharm Professional Edition on my computer because that's what I use most of the time to program in Python. But PyCharm CE is right here. And when I want to open that, I just double click it. And the first time I run it, of course, I have to do all of the things to get it going. And I'm going to skip the import of any settings here because I want to show you what a fresh a fresh install looks like. Okay, so here is PyCharm CE. And the first thing I want to do is um, I'm going to start a new project. Now, you'll notice down here it says take a quick onboarding tour. Uh, if you're new to programming or you're new to using an IDE, I would highly recommend doing this tour. Uh, it will walk you through some of the basics of how to use PyCharm. I'm going to jump right in and start a new project. <clears throat> and you can see here the location is where I want my files to be kept. And sometimes it's nice to put that on the desktop. So I'm going to create a folder. I'll call it PyCharm and underscore projects. You can call it whatever you want. That folder will appear on your desktop. And this will become the root folder for your for your uh, project. And the nice thing about having it on desktop is that that's where all of your Python uh, scripts will be kept inside that folder. So I'll click open. You can see the path here changes to that. I'm not going to check the Git repository or the welcome script box. <clears throat> and I'm going to leave the interpreter type as project environment. And I've got Python 3.13, which is what we just installed in the previous step. And I'll click Create. Now I've got a new window here. I'm going to enlarge that a little bit. Over here you can see my, Py, my PyCharm project. And I've got some folders, virtual environment, bin, library, and I've got some, some things going on here that I don't need to worry about. We can kind of just ignore all those. In fact, I'm just going to take this virtual environment and 
collapse that folder so I don't even have to look at all that stuff. When I'm ready to create my first file, I'm going to right click or control click on that folder, choose new, and I'm going to choose a new Python file. And I'm going to call that hello world.py. No spaces in there, just all squished together, hello world.py. And this is my first script here. And let's go ahead and type our first script and run it and see what happens. So I'm going to type print with parentheses. <clears throat> Inside that parentheses, I'm going to put some double quotes and I'm going to type hello world. So print is a, is a function that just prints something to the screen. And because it's a function, I have to have opening and closing parentheses and then I'm giving it a string called hello world. This is the simplest program you can possibly write on any computer. But when I run that, you can see down here, it says hello world. You can ignore this other stuff for right now, um, but hello world is what I just produced. So if I change that to hello bill and I run it again, you can see it says hello bill so that's how you get started with pycharm community edition uh, that gets you through the install process and your first program so congratulations you are now a python programmer